In lesson 1.2, students look at paper, a sheet of plastic from a plastic bag, and aluminum foil to see how they're similar and how they're different. The idea is for students to do simple tests on these materials to discover their characteristic properties. Students will realize that different substances and materials have different properties that make them good for a specific purpose. Let's take a look. Students will begin by looking at plastic, aluminum foil, and paper and just describing how it looks and feels. You can demonstrate how to observe these substances by using a piece of felt as an example. You can say the felt feels soft, it's flexible, when you hold it up to the light you can't see through it. So students will do those same things with their plastic, aluminum foil, and paper. And then they'll do a simple test. Here we're going to show the crinkle test where they take each piece of material crunch it up into a ball, and then put it down and see how it reacts. So the plastic unfolds really quickly, the aluminum foil stays together, and the paper is sort of in between. It'll unfold a bit, but not nearly as much as the plastic. And students also do a stretch test, a tear test, and a fold test. And in each case, they try to do exactly the same thing to each material so that it's a fair test. In this way, students begin to learn how to test materials or to do an investigation in a fair way. Next, students do a strength test. And you can demonstrate this by putting your piece of felt between two sets of books to give students an idea of how this will work. And then begin putting pennies right in the center and see how many pennies the felt can hold before it fails. And students will do this with their plastic, paper, and aluminum foil, and see if there's a difference between them as far as this type of strength goes. And you'll encourage students to use paper, aluminum foil, and plastic of all the same dimensions so that it's as fair a test as possible. After a discussion about the different materials and their properties based on the tests that students did, you can show a simulation so that students can see that certain materials are good for certain uses. Let's see how this works. We'll just use one of these to see how it works. So the way you use the simulation is that you choose one of the objects on the left or right. In this case I'll pick the fish tank which is in the middle on the left. So it shows a picture of the fish tank and then you go below where it says fabric, wood, metal, and glass and just choose each one to see whether it would be a good material to make a fish tank from. At the top, you see the properties that you want. You want it to be transparent, waterproof, strong and rigid. That would make a good fish tank. Even though we know that they won't work well, we'll take a look at all the possibilities. First, let's look at fabric. So the fish tank is now made of fabric, and we're going to use the button in the upper right here to test it. It's terrible. It's not transparent, not waterproof, it's not strong or rigid. No points for that. Now we'll try wood. A wooden fish tank. Let's test it. It's not transparent. That's not good. It's not really waterproof. It could leak. But it's pretty strong and rigid, so it gets one point. How about a metal fish tank? Let's test it. Well, it's not transparent, so that's not good. But it is waterproof, and it is strong and rigid, so it gets two points. The last one, glass. We're going to test it. It's transparent, it's waterproof, it's strong and rigid. Gets three points, it's the winner. So this material has certain properties that make it good for this purpose. You can go along and test each object in this way. And it's kind of fun, and kids will get the idea that materials have certain properties which make them good for certain uses. So for the NGSS standard 2 PS1-2, Analyze data obtained from testing different materials to determine which materials have the properties that are best suited for an intended purpose. In this lesson, students have tested the properties of different materials. They've seen how they react in different tests and which one is the strongest. In the next lesson, students will check different materials for absorbency. Finally, in lesson 1.4, students will apply that learning to create a boat that holds the most pennies without sinking. So for the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, planning and carrying out investigations, 
plan and conduct an investigation collaboratively to produce data to serve as the basis for evidence to answer a question, students do this in the lesson by testing the different materials and seeing that they have different properties. For disciplinary core ideas, structure and properties of matter, different properties are suited to different purposes. Students discover the different properties of the materials and use their findings as the basis to make decisions about using materials for different purposes in the next two lessons. For cross-cutting concepts, cause and effect, simple tests can be designed to gather evidence to support or refute student ideas about causes. Here, students do simple tests to gather information that they will use to make decisions about designing a boat that will cause the boat to either carry more weight or not. So thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.